All right, there's like a 30 second delay. Now I'm, I'm actually starting it up. And it's weird because you can't see yourself unless you're in the Wirecraft, Wirecast. Let's see, is this one kicking on? Because what I'm gonna do for the folks who are here is I'm gonna edit this. It's gonna download, I'm gonna download it and get rid of all the stuff, so bear with me. That is wild. Okay. The way we're gonna do it is, first of all, a lot of the questions must be on point, you know, dealing with the topic. And also I'm trying to set it up to deal with trolls. Okay. All right, so we're gonna jump into it. For those of you who are here, just letting you know there is a in-stream offer once the stream is over, you can't get it. It's $99 for digital introductions only. That's it, nothing else. Just letting you know that. Everything's below, you can check out the offers. What will happen is you will sign up for the course. There's nothing there. There'll be something there within tonight and then there'll be a write-up and then some more special content. Just letting you know that. All right, I'm getting to the comments. What's going on? GLFH. What's up, Nick? What's up, Rob? All right, so we're gonna jump into this really quick. These are the rules. You show up, you get the training. If you want the recorded sessions, those are things you have to buy that'll be part of the course. All right, we're gonna talk about the main thing, which is creating the offer. Now, I'm gonna use some examples of where people go wrong and why it's so frustrating to sell stuff online or in person. We're gonna say you have a t-shirt company and you wanna sell your t-shirts to people. What you do is you come up with a design that you like, it's hot, right? You, you talk to your friends and then you go out and commit money to a screen printer, you buy blanks, you put all that stuff together and then you come online, you have a nice store, your boy, your girl put together and then you start posting links on Facebook or the gram or Twitter and nobody's buying your stuff. Part of the reason is, in developing your offer, you must source out who your audience is first. Before you come up with a logo, before you come up with a t-shirt blank or a design. Because typically, many people think that they can create all that stuff and then on the back end, develop the audience. You have to know who your audience is first before you make an offer. I'll give you an example. Let's say you have a brand new car. Uh, it's, a, it's a Hyundai or a Kia, brand new. You're in a position where you can get out of the way, right? Then you go approach this person. You don't know this person. It's like, look, I'm giving away this Kia. I'm giving away this Honda. And you give the guy the key, right? And the guy looks like, I don't want that. And you're like, wait a minute. I'm trying to give you a brand new car. Well, the guy drives a Bentley. And he has a Lamborghini to tool around on the weekends. He doesn't want a Kia, he doesn't want a Hyundai, none of that stuff. And where you went wrong is, you think what you have is so great that anyone's gonna want it when, mm, it's not gonna happen. Well, let's see. You're live, Trevor. What's up, Gerald? What's up, Chris? What's up, Quazzle? Now, in constructing your offer, you know, I'll, I'll keep my, uh, I'll keep an eye on the comments. In constructing your offer, you have to know who your audience is. I'm gonna give you another example of something that I did and you'll see me do it on Rich Self-Published Author. When I was writing the erotica, I had a certain office, off, ah, had a certain audience in mind, which means there were certain people who were excluded. All good marketing excludes certain demographics and certain groups because if you're talking to everybody, your, music, your message is gonna be diluted. So I spent three months writing copy, testing headlines, testing samples, and there were not one audience that emerged, but 10. And if I ran a post with this title, with this content, it did well. I had a few posts that did so well that I could just change the title and they still would perform very well because they were really meaty, they drew people in. And then there was other posts 
that were for other audiences that didn't get a lot of traffic, but when someone clicked, it was a really, really strong conversion. That would have not happened without putting together an offer, the, knowing the audience and putting together the offer correctly. What's up, AKW Beats? Chris, which books on copywriting do you recommend? I recommend none, and I'm going to tell you why. Copywriting is part of audience development, but if you get your phone and go door to door and start talking to people and create a, let's see, a spreadsheet of your results, you're going to know your audience much faster. Copywriting works really, really well when you already know your audience. So you still got to do this step. You, there's nothing you can do. You just can't skip over. You still have to do that step. Uh, the, you know what's funny? I did not read one copywriting book for the Craigslist ads. This is how I learned, and this is, goes really to the heart of the matter of what I'm telling you to do. I had a warehouse, and every Saturday, I would be in that warehouse. And I would sit there and I would talk to people and I would see what they would buy. And I got to learn people. I, I would play this little game. There was this group of folks who loved polo shirts. I would take the stained polo shirts that we couldn't sell on eBay and I would put them in places and hide them and see how long it took them to find it. Because they would go in these big old boxes, which were like four feet, sometimes five feet high, just huge boxes full of clothes. And it just you see ass and elbows, right? I knew them to the point that I could play games with them. So part of copywriting is the major part because let's say you are a great copywriter, but you suck at audience development. It's just not gonna work. Um, another example of me living and doing what I'm talking about is this channel is for beginner business people, B-School for Hustlers is for seasoned business people, Video, uh, Mac Daddy Media is for video marketing. Rich self-published author is for people who want to write and blog and things like that because it's, called, it's part of audience development and it's an inbound marketing thing. If someone clicks on the video that's for self, you know, rich self-published author, they're interested in writing. So they've already self-identified that they're interested in that. And then if they like the first video, then the second video is very similar. The third video is very similar. The fourth video is very similar. The fifth video is very similar. I will develop a strong tribe. But if I, um, if I did what I did with this channel, which remarkably has worked much longer than I thought it would, it's just gonna create a mess because we live in a very noisy world. Everybody is trying to say, buy my thing. And it makes more sense to be very singular in certain things. But I've just never read copywriting books. I would probably start, but I just never did it. I just learned people. I was in my warehouse and I paid attention to how people responded. Uh, once again, I've never read a book on market research. I think one of the things, and you're gonna get this with this course if you choose to buy the recorded sessions is, you've gotta do this stuff like, okay, reading a book is good. I'm a big proponent in reading. But when you immerse yourself into your business, you're going to learn stuff that other people don't know. I went to this video marketing conference in California, and I'm going again this year. I had a lot of heavy hitters, and I learned some stuff. I knew stuff they didn't know. And these were like people top of the game, but they were the top of the game and this, this, this. But very few people have inbound video marketing experience. So there was a lot of stuff that I knew they didn't. And I was just like, wow. So doing your own work you will come up with things that other people won't know. Robert A. Burns, I think G is saying that experience with the testing the market would be a great way to get results. Reading is good, but action will help you test and see it's working or what you need to do to change. Yeah, because this is the thing. Everybody online is trying to do app development, blog development, influencer development, where you put something out so hot that people just flock to it. That's great but most of the businesses in the world don't work like that. 91% of all commerce is still done out here. Going back to Amazon buying Whole Foods, Amazon bought a brick and mortar business. Think about that. 
they bought a brick and mortar business. So that's the thing. Now we're going to go to some of the steps. Before you do your blog or set up your company or print up your business cards with I'm CEO bitch and all other stuff, you need to find an audience to serve. You need to do that first before you spend any money. And the thing is, finding the audience is free. Well, sweat equity. Unless you want to pay someone to find an audience for you. This is reading blogs, watching YouTube channels, just getting out there and seeing something that, one, you like, two, you can see yourself creating content if you want to be an inbound marketer day after day after day. Because this is where things start to get really rough because people will like want to get into the, the weight loss niche or they want to get into the fitness niche or they want to get into the car niche or they want to get into the gym niche, but they really don't care about that stuff. It's just, it makes money. And then when they get in it and they see how much work is required, then things start to go sideways. So step number one, and this is going to be part of your homework, is to find an audience that you can serve. Some examples of what I do. I like to write, so I'm going to start serving expiring writers. I like making money online. I'm going to start serving people with Mac Daddy Media on how to use video to make money. I like personal development. Glenn and Cameron, personal development for hustlers. So these are all things that I really like and I have been doing for years that I'm going to build audiences around stuff I already know how to do, things I already like, and things that I can create massive content with. Uh, let's see, Flow 8i. Amazon's trying to ship that food like Uber Eats to <laughs> deliver their food. I, I could be, could be, but we're gonna stay on point. Now the second thing you need to do is learn your audience, which I kind of covered, but going back to the people in the warehouse. You know, this is a story that's a little scary, but it turned out well. There was this group of people who would come, and I thought they were a family, but there was like 12 of them, so I think it was like, maybe they were a family, aunts, uncles, whatever. It was just the day before Thanksgiving, it was cold. And I'll tell you about the warehouse. There was no heat, there was no air conditioning. And you know, sometimes we would run these big torpedo heaters <clears throat> just to take the chill out there. So we did that, and this family shows up. And I'm out there, and I see the girl, and she gets out the van, and she busts her ass because it's ice. And I'm like, please don't sue me. She gets up. I'm all right. She comes in the warehouse and spends 100 bucks. So I knew my audience didn't care about heat. <laughs> they didn't care about air. They didn't care about ice on the ground. They came for those deals. So when you know your audience like that, you can make a lot of money when other people think this stuff won't work. So you got to learn your audience. And the third thing you have to do, which is what I'm doing to you right now, you have to speak to your audience, not so much from a platform, but find an audience, a blog, a niche, and then you start commenting on everything. Like, let's say you're into the vegan, you know, vegan niche. You're a vegan. Every vegan blog you need to be commenting on, sharing your experiences, building relationships and friends. And then it's the point where you're posting so much that people know who you are. And it's like, you start hearing stuff like this. Man, I always love your post. I, I look forward. When I see your name, I know it's going to be something good. At that point is when you start your own blog because now you have people to take over there. Well, I mean, good marketing is extreme stereotyping. It really is, Mark. All right, so the fourth thing. You take this information and you start to build an offer. Now, this thing with building offers is not just today. This is going to be all week because there's so many parts to it. Your first offer is, why should someone read your blog? Not how you can get money on somebody, but why should someone read your blog? What is going to be your unique selling proposition? That's going to be part of your offer because if you create a blog that looks like every other blog, you create a blog and you write the same stuff everyone else is writing, it's a noisy world. Why should anyone read your blog? So that's the first offer you have to create. It's like, hey, when I come to this blog, what am I going to get? You got to spell that out. Then the fifth thing, you got to make a sample offer. You put your blog out and you start testing. Going back to the Craigslist example, I tested for three months. A lot of stuff didn't work. Nobody responded. I fell flat. So testing is something you can do if you don't have money. You, you can just spend your time seeing what converts because if it's not going to convert for free, it's not going to convert when you put money on it. 
I'm going to say that again because this is a big mistake that a lot of people make. I got money for paid traffic, right? If it doesn't convert for free, it's not going to convert with money. <clears throat> it's just not. And that's a hard pill for a lot of people to swallow. All right. Then your sixth step after creating your first offer, because during this week, we're going to talk about making a lot of different offers. You take your feedback and then you put out five or six, seven test offers. And then what works best, that's what you continue to roll with. I tested one of my ads that I wrote nine years ago. I put it up, put the old title on it, and it instantly started converting. So once you build good content, it's gonna convert for a very long time. If you build tertiary content or stuff that's just for now, or trend-based content, it's gonna be here today, gone today. All right? So these sessions are going to be short. And just to say, if you want the recorded versions, go below, grab a hold of that link. And just during this stream for $99, you can get digital introductions only. You're not getting the full thing. Like everyone that bought the early offer, they got B-School for Hustlers. They're going to get every course that I offer on this platform. But just for the day, well, just for the stream, be sure to go ahead and click that link if you want to be part of it digital introductions. Now, I'm gonna open up the floor to questions. Questions have to be specific to what I'm talking about. So we will see what's going on here. And just, this is gonna be edited. So if I go on, don't worry about that being part of the recorded conversation. But offers are super important. First, you have to make the right offer and then you have to consistently put it out, all right? And if any questions don't flow in, because uh, I'll be back tomorrow and I'll be back the day after, uh, we're probably going to do this five days a week. And once again, you show up, the lesson's free. If you want the recorded sessions and the special offer and access to the webinars, then you have to buy the paid content. Okay. Now, another thing I'm going to put out here, um, I'm not going to make this like crazy sexy because I'm not going to change the name because this is just basic business. This is something that people have done for hundreds of years. And you, you'll hear people like, you know, going in the DMs. That's, uh, that's cold calling. <laughs> that's what going in the DMs is, it's cold calling. All right, so nobody has any questions, which is cool. I'm gonna wrap this up in a minute. Uh, we may do just a live open stream today. We may not, I'll let you know. But for those who are interested in getting into digital introductions for $99, go below, get in the video, below the video, and click that link, and then you'll be set up. There's no content right now. What I'm gonna do is download this, edit it, get all this other stuff out, and then that's gonna be uploaded. Then there's gonna be a write-up. There's gonna be a task for you to do, and then there's gonna be some more special content. Broderick. Is there a certain amount of people in your audience you have to have before you start making offers? No. Okay, I'm going to talk about some that everyone should be familiar with. Everyone has a boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. How many offers did you, you met one person, you liked them, and you started making offers? Let's go to dinner. Let's hang out. Let's catch this movie. You, that's just one person. So you can start making offers with one person. You do not need 50. You do not need 100. And the good thing about this is, you're gonna screw up in the beginning. So would you rather screw up with a few people or would you rather screw up with hundreds of people? Think about that. Uh, Chris McDonald, do you use short link, uh, a link shortening service like Bitly to track your Craigslist ads? That's a good question. Craigslist has made it um, damn near impossible to get good metrics. Back in the day, I used to use something called Photo Bucket. And what I did was put a really juicy picture in the ad and just notice how many people would click on it because photo bucket had a functionality where you could check how many people looked at the image. So if a bunch of people were looking at the image, but nobody was sending me anything, that meant something was wrong. Title was wrong. Content was wrong. Something was wrong. So I would go back and adjust because if you're getting a lot of traffic and no one's converting, that's the first sign. So first thing I would do is change the title. Then I would say, Oh, Still a bunch of people looking at it, but no one's converting. Then I would go back and change the price. And 75% of the time on Craigslist, it was the price. So no, I didn't, you can't. Craigslist doesn't allow you to use pretty much anything. 
Robert Spence, how highly would you rank consistent content generation once you have an audience? Extremely high. If you're using any of these platforms, the more content you put out, the more engaged you make your audience, the better. Let's see. Uh, Robert, how often is consistent? Three to seven days a week. Sure thing, Broderick. Yeah, Craigslist has really changed the game, but the thing is, with your blog, it's, it's just way different, way different. There's so many ways you can track what's going on. But the big thing is, you want to get people who are interested in you and what you're talking about on a strong basis. Lukewarm people just don't buy. Colin, I'm pretty far from making an offer, but can find your audience be as simple as blogging and seeing who engages with the content, along with curation and commenting as well? You can. I did it, but it's really slow, but it does work. And you, your first offer, and remember, uh, Colin, your first offer is, why should someone read this blog? I mean, essentially, why should someone give a shit about reading your blog? You've got to solve that. That's the first thing you got to solve. So you will be making an offer very early. Uh, Rona, what's the best place to find blogs that are similar to your niche? Google. Uh, send niche 234. Uh, let's see. This isn't a question. I just picked up some of your courses recently. I've gone through Pimping Your Mind for Success and some powerful stuff. I love it. Thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, Chris McDonald, did you use Grasshopper PBX to track conversions on Craigslist? No. Yeah, consistency is very important. Okay, and with keeping these short, let's see, where are we? We're pretty much close to the limit because when these render, and I download them and put them in the course. I'm going to cut out anything that doesn't really pertain to it. So they're going to be shorter. I'm going to try to keep these modules, since there's going to be so many, 15, 20 minutes. That way you can come in after work or, you know, essentially I'm designing this course where you can do a section within 30 minutes to an hour. So these must be short. So we're, we're about to bounce. So if you want to go ahead and grab that offer that you can only get during the stream, you need to grab it now. Okay, looks like everyone's asked their questions. It's like I said, 30 second, second delay. And you're gonna see this change up a little bit. Like right now, I'm trying this. Uh, it was a seriously rainy day, so it's a little dark in here, but I'm gonna bring the lights next time. And we're just gonna go probably four to five days a week with training. And once again, you show up, the lesson's free, you want the recorded sessions, you gotta pay for that. Okay, so with that, just wanna say thanks for everyone coming out. Be sure to grab that offer. I am about to end this, and I will see you tomorrow.